Ah. Oh, this coffee. Awful. Greetings, fellow game scholars. My name is Professor Stefano Gualeni, and I'm the author of, among many things, uh, philosophical small experimental games like Doors, the game, and Something Something Soup Something. Well, welcome to what is definitely my office at the University of Malta. So, talking about the bad taste of my coffee, would you be able to pinpoint the culprit for it? Who's responsible for my beverage? Is it the person who made it just outside of this room? The person who hired the person who made it just outside of this room? Would it be who picked the beans? Who roasted the beans? Who bought the beans? Would it be the person who chose the machine? The person who maintains the machine? If we reason in that way, the responsibility ramifies back in history, probably, uh, to both humans and machines back to the 15th century, when the Yemeni traders originally popularized the beverage. Of course, this short talk is not about coffee, it's about video games, but the question remains the same. Can we easily pinpoint a responsible person? And how far does the responsibility for the vision and the creation of the game stretch? We can mention a number of people, institutions, corporations, companies, and material artifacts that contribute to the creation of the game, similar to that of a coffee. The question of responsibility and authorship is obviously a crucial one when it comes to games referencing and games archiving. In 2019, together with some friends, Jonas and Ricardo, we tried to answer these questions in relation to video games. Um, in a paper called How to Reference a Digital Game, which is implicated with notions like authorships and politics behind how we reference and how we archive digital games. In that one paper, we proposed a dual canon on how to better uh, reference digital games. Uh, in, and in this kind of canon that we propose, authorship plays a central role. In the dual canon that we propose for games referencing, we take authorship as a central point, as I said. Um, and we divide the possibility to identify a clear person or a clear figure who is responsible for the vision of the game. And the second part of the canon uh, addresses games as something with distributed authorship. So something that cannot be clearly attributed to one single entity or person. Uh, you should be able to see both canons on screen right now, one after the other, but you don't need necessarily to scribble them down right now because you'll be able to see them in the links that I provide below this video. Obviously, what the paper does is not only presenting two canons, but also explaining how to use the two canons and how to make a decision as to which to use. Um, it also advises on how to handle exceptions, such as, for example, how to reference the DLC of a video game, or a specific scene within it. Another thing that the paper does is that it gives a historical trajectory of how we've been referencing games in games literature and game studies literature. Should you be interested in how to reference a digital game, the paper, or other works of mine, including my books and my other papers and my games, feel free, and actually very welcome, to check my website, which should be appearing on screen right now. All right, oh, well, thank you for listening and happy referencing everybody.